Leave Insert Higher Level Maths 2020. Uh, this is paper one, higher level, and this is the solution to question two. Question two is our complex numbers question, and it says find the two complex numbers Z1 and Z2 that satisfy the following simultaneous equations where I squared is equal to negative one. I times Z1 is equal to minus four plus three I and three times Z1 minus Z2 is equal to 11 plus 17 I. Now this was a bit of a surprise for most students um, to have simultaneous equations in the complex numbers question was um, where we haven't seen it before so it was very surprising but it actually wasn't too hard. There is a long way that you can do this um, which is the way I did it initially but I'm going to show you the, the quicker way. Um, the quicker way is if we take the first equation we have um, i times z1 is equal to minus 4 plus 3i. Now I want to find z1 so I'm going to divide both sides by i minus 4 plus 3i over i. Now I have a fraction here with an i in the denominator so if I have an i in the denominator I want to rationalize the fraction so I'm going to multiply above and below by i. So I'm multiplying by i over i. Now the top of that will be minus 4i plus 3i squared and the bottom will be i squared. So that means that the top is then um, 3 by i squared, that's 3 by minus 1, so that's minus 3. So it's minus 4i minus 3 divided by i squared, which is minus 1. So that then gives z1 as minus 4i minus 3 divided by minus 1. So that's 4i plus 3. So that's z1. Then to get z2, we'll just sub, sub z1 into the second equation. So that would be 3 times z1, which is 4i plus 3, minus z2 is equal to 11 plus 17i. So that's 12i plus 9 minus z2 is equal to 11 plus 17i. Uh, let's take 12i from both sides and also take minus or take 9 from both sides. So minus z2 is equal to 11 minus 9, which is 2, and 17i minus 12i, which is plus 5i. And we want z2, not minus z2, so divide across by minus 1. z2 is going to give us minus 2 minus 5i, and that's our second complex number. On to part B then, uh, this was also something um, that the students would not have been familiar with. Uh, complex numbers in a geometric sequence uh, find or the common ratio of the sequence. So to find the common ratio, it's the uh, second term divided by the first term. So or is going to be equal to the second term, which is 5 minus i, divided by the first term, which is 3 plus 2i. And just like the last question, if we are dividing complex numbers, we need to multiply by the conjugate. So that'll be multiplying by 3 minus 2i over 3 minus 2i. So on the top, we get 5 by 3 is 15. We get 5 by minus 2i is minus 10i. We get minus i by 3, which is minus 3i. We get minus i by minus 2i, which is plus 2i squared. Then on the bottom, you get 3 by 3 is 9, 3 by minus 2 is minus 6i, plus 2i by 3 is plus 6i, they cancel out, and then 2i by minus 2i is minus 4i squared. So then that simplifies, we have 15, we have two i squared, so that's two times minus one. So that's just minus two. So 15 minus two is 13. And then we have minus 10 i minus three i is minus 13 i. And then on the, on the denominator, we have nine. 
minus 4 times i squared. i squared is minus 1, minus 4 times minus 1 is 4, so it's 9 plus 4 is 13. And then we just have 13 minus 13i divided by 13 is 1 minus i. So our um, common ratio or is 1 minus i. Part 2. Use the Moivre's theorem to find T9, the ninth term of the sequence. Write your answer in the form of A plus BI, where A and B are integers. So if we want to find the ninth term, we're going to be multiplying by this common ratio a certain number of times. So this is our first term, uh, T1. To get T2, you multiply by OR. To get T3, the next term, you'd multiply by OR twice, or OR squared. So to get T9, we're going to multiply by OR to the power of 8. So that's going to be our first term, 3 plus 2i, multiplied by 1 minus i to the power of 8. Now, we need to use de Moivre's theorem, so that's the 1 minus i to the power of 8. So we need to put this into polar form and then use de Moivre's theorem. So polar form z is equal to or times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Uh, or is calculated by the square root of uh, a squared plus b squared. So this is 1 squared plus minus 1 squared. So or is equal to root 2. And then to find theta, theta is equal to, well, I'll draw a little sketch of the um, complex number. It's 1 minus i, so across 1 and down 1. There it is there. So I have a little triangle there like that. I can enlarge that triangle. It's a right angle triangle with a side of one, a side of one, right angle. This is my angle theta. The hypotenuse is root two, and I'm looking for theta. So I can use anything really. I could use sine, cos, or tan to find theta. Um, we'll just use tan because it'll be one over one. So tan of theta is equal to one over one. So to get theta then, theta is equal to the inverse tan of one. So theta is equal to pi over four. Now, because it's in the fourth quadrant, um, it's negative pi over four coming from the x-axis. So theta is equal to minus pi over four. So then we have our theta, we have our or, we can put um, this into de Moivre's theorem and we can put it to the power of eight. So z to the power of eight is equal to or to the power of 8, which is root 2 to the power of 8 times cosine of 8 times minus pi over 4 plus i sine of 8 times minus pi over 4. That's de Moivre's theorem there. So then that means z to the power of 8 is equal to, well, root 2 to the power of 8 is the same as say root two squared is two and then two to the power of four. So that's 16 times uh, eight times the cosine, or sorry, eight times minus pi over four. That'd be cosine of minus two pi plus i sine minus two pi. So z to the power of eight is equal to 16 times cosine of minus 2 pi is 1 and plus i times the sine of minus 2 pi which is 0. So z to the power of 8 is equal to 16 times 1 which is just 16. So that's the de Moivre's theorem part done. Now I have to go back and multiply my 16, which is my 1 minus i to the power of 8, by the 3 plus 2i. So we have 3 plus 2i times 16, which is equal to 48 plus 32i. So that is t9.
t9 is equal to our ninth term of the sequence.